Hello friends. Welcome to the woods. Boy, it's starting to springify around here just a little bit. It's still very cold, but the first of the nettles are coming up, which is really exciting because that's a prime springtime edible for my family and we are really hungry for wild edibles. So some excitement. Today I wanted to share a, a method to be able to learn any skill much more quickly than we would usually think possible. And I'm putting this under the title of fake it till you make it because fake it till you make it is a, a common term that we hear in our culture. And there's a gift in there and there's also a, a big roadblock in there that affects most of us when we're trying to learn a new skill. The skill acquisition is something that most of us are pretty concerned with. We want to add to our martial arts repertoire, our tracking, our wild edibles, any skill that you have, whether you're trying to get good at driving or shooting, all of that is affected by this, this idea that's encapsulated in fake it till you make it. Now at Rewild University, obviously people would come the forest monks and they would be learning a host of new skills. And as they learn these new skills, you get to see these little mechanisms, if you will, in action. And there's basically two things going on. The one is what I'm going to call automatic learning. That's what we're aiming for. Automatic learning is where we can acquire skills very quickly and efficiently. Over here is the realm of self-punishment. Self-punishment is a, a mental game we play with ourselves and it affects so many aspects of life, but you're gonna see where it really comes into play when we're trying to learn new skills. All right, let's begin with this idea of fake it till you make it. And a lot of the things we would do at Rewild University had to do with trying to shift our mental emotional state. And we got people that were dealing with depression and all sorts of mental challenges. A little trick we can use is to put a smile onto our face. <laughs> and just smiling, just invoking those muscles tends to release some feel good brain chemicals. Now, not as much if you know that you're doing this in order to get those results, but still just putting that smile on can make a huge shift. Often when encouraging people to do this, I would hear, it just feels fake. You know, I, mm, <laughs> I'm faking it and it doesn't feel good to fake it. Now, I can see that perspective for sure, but we have to recognize that when we feel like we're faking something, for sure our ego is heavily tied in to this situation. And here's what I mean. If I could step back and say, okay, I'm looking at my physiological system and I want to try to increase its ability to see things positively. I know that Invoking these muscles, engaging these muscles, tends to release some brain chemicals that will start to build some neurological pathways and build up my ability to be more positive. Then I can step back, I can look at it. You know, I'm not a fan of looking at things mechanistically, but here's a place where it can actually be an advantage. I can look at that and say, oh, okay. I'm almost looking at this as a machine. I mm, do this, I get this effect. I burn the pathways and I start to create a more positive state. It's just one step, of course. That's not going to do it for you, faking smiles. But it can be one step or one tool in your toolbox. If I smile and I feel, oh, I'm faking it, what I'm really doing is I'm engaged in my ego feeling. In other words, I'm engaged in this self-punishment mechanism to some extent. The self-punishment mechanism looks at any action we're doing, whether we're smiling or we're 
trying to throw a punch. And when we do that, it looks and it goes, oh, that sucked. Here's what you did wrong. Picks it apart. And in picking it apart, it doesn't just look at it and say, oh, okay, you could have dropped the elbow in a little bit here when you threw that jab instead of flaring it way out. It looks and goes, oh, Kenton, stupid, what are you doing? So what's happening here is that at some level, and it can be gross or subtle. By gross, I mean telling yourself verbally how much you suck. Or it can be very subtle by just saying, ah, I, I kind of feel like I'm faking it when I do this. In either case, we're engaging our ego to self-punish to some extent. I would see this especially in teaching martial arts at Rewell University because this is a, a for most people, a completely new way of moving our body. It's highly complex and especially as we get into sparring, we're dealing with so many factors. It's, it's overwhelming. It's not the sort of thing that you can practice like you would practice writing the letter A and trying to get it better and better. You can just concentrate on that. When you're engaged in martial arts training, it's like trying to let, write the letter A while there's a flood coming in at you and the paper is being bounced around and your pencil is broken into three pieces and you're trying to hold it together as you write. And in life, most skill acquisition is like this. We don't get a lot of skills that we get to apply in a completely sterilized environment or a completely safe environment. Bodro would be another example. You're doing that Bodro, even if you're doing it in your garage or in your living room to start in a, in a pretty controlled environment, there's a lot going on, a lot to balance. There's muscle control, there's keeping your breathing. Then take it outside, try to do it when it's windy, on uneven terrain, so much more difficult. And real life is like this, right? It's messy, it's organic, and it shifts and changes. Our environment is not stable. This is whether we're doing the martial arts or we're doing the bow drill, we're trying to hold a conversation with somebody and navigate emotions and thoughts and words. So if I can learn to recognize that self-punishment mechanism, if I can learn to recognize when I'm connecting my sense of self with the skill or the shift, the transformation I am trying to acquire or make, then I can start to step over into this automatic learning. And the automatic learning is simply when we are learning martial arts and we are here and we try to duck and weave around something and we get hit. We don't go, ah, oh, and attach ourselves to it. We just get hit and move on. We basically allow our body, mind, to learn the skill itself. Now, we do have to observe what happened in the system to allow me to get hit so that I can make corrections, but I don't have to equate myself with it. And there is a tremendous amount of energy that gets wasted, essentially, in connecting yourself with that skill acquisition. With learning martial arts, often <laughs> people spend, I'm gonna say 80% of their energy in self-punishment and only 20% actually in skill acquisition. As soon as they get rid of that self-punishment mechanism and can learn to just observe their system, make corrections and allow the system to learn then 100% of that energy goes towards learning and acquiring the new skill. And it happens so much more quickly. Same with the bow drill. <laughs> if you've been there and you've been doing the bow drill and phew, your spindle flies out pretty soon, God dang, uh, and you're so pissed off. And that anger can only emerge when we're connecting ourselves our self-performance in some way with this activity. When I can watch it and it's 
flips out and I look at that with curiosity and I say, hmm, okay, is there something in, in the bow drill kit itself that's affecting this or do I need a little bit more pressure down? I'm going to experiment with more pressure down this time. And you do that, things happen quickly and efficiently. All of this harkens back to some old wisdom traditions and a meditation that I'll share with you all someday at some point where we, even though we recognize the holisticness of our body, mind, spirit, we purposefully take the divisions that most of us feel. In this case, maybe the division of my body from my mind, from my heart, spirit, and I use that division consciously. So I'm going to say essentially that I'm stepping outside my body. I'm not my body. I'm going to watch it like it's a, a robot or a, something that's acting on its own accord. And then I'm going to critique it, give it some advice on how it could have ducked under that strike in a different way or it could have noticed the body language coming from the other person and anticipated that strike coming and then let it perform again over and over and allow it to learn on its own. We do this right when we're meditating with our thinking. We can step outside of those thoughts. And in a way, what we're doing is we're not so much dividing ourselves up as we are ceasing to identify our sense of self with the thoughts, with the skill I'm trying to acquire. This is automatic learning. It's super powerful. And it allows you to acquire skills lightning fast in a way that you haven't been able to before. And again, all you have to do is start to learn to recognize where you identify self with your skill acquisition in this case. So the next time you feel like you are faking it in whatever your skill acquisition is, whether it is a hard skill or a soft skill, whatever, stop and ask yourself, how am I equating my sense of self with the performance in attempting to acquire this skill? And if you look deeply, you will find some place where you are attaching your sense of self there. Again, sometimes this is pretty subtle stuff and you have to look deeply. But if you find it, you can go, oh, okay, there it is. I'm understanding how I do this. Now I'm going to recognize it more easily next time. And when I do that, I'm going to make a conscious effort to say, okay, that's great. But this isn't about stoking my sense of self. This is about acquiring this skill. And then I look over here and I say, body, mind, I'm going to allow you to learn this skill. I'm going to step back. I'm going to be a helpful observer. I'm going to watch your performance. I'm going to give some creative advice. And then let you perform again and trust that whatever part of you is learning this skill is going to do it and it's going to do it effectively because we're all capable of learning and if you're like me <laughs> I imagine most of you would agree here that it's fun to learn new skills it's fun to try to find the places where we are not our best selves where we might be lacking and to see if we can creatively build those places up, transform them. It doesn't have to be, I must become perfect. It can just be a fun adventure of seeing how can I take this thing that's a little rusty and beat up and how can I polish it up and make it a little shinier, help it to serve myself and the people around me, my community a little bit better. Maybe that's what this human experience is all about. Okay, my friends. <laughs>
love to you all and share down in the comments any experiences because oh, i just have to break in and say when people share their real live experiences down here this adds so much to these videos so share a place where you've been trying to acquire a skill and how you noticed when you were equating yourself with it any skill that was tough because you were self-punishing in some way and share any moments when you've experienced this this sensation of stepping back from your body mind observing what you were doing without that self-judgment and what happened to your learning process when you did that all right can't wait to talk with you down in the comments love to you all